G'day guys, how you doing? And uh, welcome to another video. Now, I bet you it's still a bit of shock uh, from the last video I made, basically going on about what we've done here. Got the rasta triplets. Um, as you can tell by my smiling face, that uh, I still can't believe we've built this system up. I mean, we started with one rasta. Um, we'd go out traveling, do a bit of uh, astrophotography, and then wanted to do the mosaics, then I started off with twins, and now we're at triplets. Um, yeah, no idea how it's, how it's happened, but it's happened, and uh, I think it's because of these guys um, urging me on in some way. Uh, I remember the very first uh, time we went to the twins, I think somebody said in the comments about it being triplets. Why don't you go triplets? And yeah, here we are. It was meant to be a bit of a joke, um, but <laughs> I just can't believe it. Anyway, enough of the rambling. We're going to start getting into some uh, projects now, but I don't want to be testing all the time. So we're going to start uh, start with a project, um, but also test or go through the system a little bit more. One of the issues that I've had is uh, the bottleneck of data coming through. So you have three images, and normally those images go straight to a USB stick. Um, but there's the bottleneck right there. So, well, one camera sends its data through, the other two are waiting. And then when it becomes a dither time, by the time it's finished its dither, it's still waiting. Or, before it goes on to its dither, it's waiting for the cameras to um, synchronize up for the dither, and then it, uh, it will then go on. So I'm losing a fair bit of time there. So what I did was I actually shot a whole bunch of uh, calibration frames or dark frames. Um, and what I did with that is I sent all the data directly onto the hard drive. Now the problem is with the base model equal 4 you've only got a 120 gig hard drive and I believe that's the same for the uh, 4S which is the middle version. Um, I think they've both got 120 gig hard drives. Don't quote me on that but mine definitely does have 120 gig hard drive. Um, and sure, it has Windows uh, 10 Enterprise, but with um, Nina, with um, ASTAP, with uh, CPWI, with the QHY drivers, with the ASCOM drivers, um, it really brings my free storage capacity down to about 26 gig. Now, when you're imaging with three RASs, um, you can imagine how much data off how much data is yet to be proven on what I can capture in a night yet. Um, so when I shoot my calibration frames, I was sending that data directly to my hard drive on the, uh, on the um, Eagle 4, and I had no problems. Kept sending it through really quickly. Um, everything was turning over really fast. Um, the moment the data went through, the image was on to the next, uh, next dark frame. So we've solved, we've solved that issue there. But then we've encountered another problem, and that is that I fill up my hard drive really fast. Um, I'm using 30 second exposures. So you can imagine how many images you're capturing over 30 second um, expo uh, exposures. Whereas a, uh, a system that's probably using a F4.9 focal length or F4 or something like that, you'd probably be maybe using, you know, anywhere from maybe three minute two to three minute exposures all the way up to what, five minutes, 10 minutes even, um, depending on the, the camera and the setup. Uh, so you're really not taking heaps of, I guess, exposures in one night. Um, whereas F2 imaging, you chew up a lot of hard drive space really quickly. Uh, so in a matter of two hours, uh, I think it was maybe a little bit longer than two hours. Um, doing my dark frames and everything, and I shot various uh, dark frame exposures for possible future ideas and messing about and whatever. Uh, I shot 1,200, and that was about 24, 25 gig. So with about 27 gig, 26 to 28 gig data free on the Eagle, um, 
I'm about limited to about 1200 frames in one night. Now remember that's you know hard, it's gonna be red, green, blue, uh, luminous HA and uh, 03 or luminous depends on, on um, the area that I'm going to be imaging. So I've ordered myself a, a new uh, a new hard drive, um, 240 gig hard drive, only cost me 25 bucks. Uh, so hopefully when that arrives, I can pull it apart and it's only a small little card um, that I can put into the the, uh, the Eagle computer. Fingers crossed, we'll see. And then I'll have to uh, clone that hard drive or mirror it, which I'll have to follow the premium loose uh, instructions on how to do that. But as I say, at this stage, I'm not 100% confident in doing that. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, hope you guys are still hanging around. Uh, a bit of jargon going on right there, but um, I'm going to go set up the, the triplets and uh, I'll get back to this. Well, we're all set up. It's just about ready to start imaging. Just need to wait for it to get a bit darker. Uh, there are a few things I need to do tonight, and that is uh, realign these um, telescopes because I did pull apart the system a little bit. Um, trying to work out what was going on with the alignment problems that I was having, and it actually turns out, I think it's to do with the cameras. Um, there's actually a bit of play in the actual uh, retaining ring itself. Um, that holds the, the FCCT system in place. So you can actually move it around in a fair sort of circle. I reckon if I align the telescopes back up and then adjust it slightly with the camera, um, we should be pretty much right on the money. But with that, we might need to make some adjustments um, with the, uh, the, the focus plane of it all. So uh, because I have had the system apart as well, um, what I've done is I've repositioned uh, the filter holders so that way they're now below um, which now makes it a lot easier because in Rassel 1 uh, the, I actually mounted it <laughs> so the filter holder was below where uh, Rassel 2 and 3 they were on top and I actually found that it was easier to change the filters over when it was mounted below than it was when it was uh, up top especially if you're shooting somewhere slightly lower having to reach up and try and get the filter out, it's uh, quite difficult. Anyway, um, so as soon as that's all aligned and we're polar aligned, we're ready to go. Um, I reckon that's probably gonna take about an hour or so. Um, I'm also gonna use uh, just the star mask, uh, sorry, the diffraction spike mask on RASA 1, um, purely for uh, adjusting the focal plane, because I use the diffraction spikes as a, um, as a form of uh, a focus as well, um, sort of like a focusing mask. So what I do is I do that and then I put it in the corners of the uh, st bright star in the corners um, and adjust it and that way I can get my spikes all coming to one uh, in the corners and then once I've done that I check all the corners and we're pretty much good to go. So I guess it's a bit of a backyard culmination style with a rasa. Um, yeah, but it, it works I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's all. Oh, the uh, what we're going to be imaging tonight. So we're going to start off with the um, the gum nebula. And now that's a project. It's going to be a big project. It's a large region, so it's like, sort of like the gum um, vela region. I don't know a great deal about it. I've never really imaged it. Um, I started imaging a little bit of it, which is the pencil nebula, uh, which you might be able to see in our video. I used the Z7 and the Esprit 150. Um, so we're going to be imaging that whole region there and, uh, and it's going to be a pretty big mosaic but we're going to start somewhere in the middle um, of the mosaic where some interesting uh, regions are and, uh, and as I said I don't know a great deal about it but we're going to learn um, hopefully a little bit about this region and, uh, and um, 
yeah, I look forward to seeing what we sort of produce. Now the imaging session is going to go something like this. Uh, green, red and blue, two hour session on, uh, on that um, to get some colour data. And then we're going to go across and do um, our luminance, uh, HA and um, O3. Uh, what I like to do is I like to mix my HA and O3 with my colour data um, in the various colour channels there. And then I add the, um, the O3 and the HA data into the luminance channel as well for when I apply the luminance um, on top of the colour channels uh, to try and get out as much detail um, as I possibly can in the images now. There's going to be some times where I won't be shooting any O3 at all, um, so I'll probably just be shooting you know, HA luminance and luminance. Um, and yeah, it might be a bit extreme, um, not sure, but uh, yeah, I also want to see if there's any HA out there in regions that um, just unknown. Uh, a bit of discovery as we astrophotography or astrophoto or image um, our sessions. Anyway, pretty excited that's not. It's a little bit breezy. Hopefully that dies down. I haven't exactly checked the forecast there. What I saw was clear skies, so it's time for image. Alright, hopefully you guys have got some clear skies where you live. Anyway, Wait for it to get darker and get imaging. Guys, I am absolutely tired. Um, what a night! Shooting with three scopes is challenging, and uh, I think I must have been really lucky with the Eta Carina Nebula shot that I took. Um, I had a lot of issues, <laughs> a lot of issues, and oh, man, I really didn't start imaging till like 2 a.m. Um, I was having a lot of Wi-Fi connectivity issues and I think that might have something to do with all the cables uh, around the Wi-Fi antennas. Um, also the telescopes uh, mounted not in the usual spot, usually back a little bit further so maybe that's got, um, uh, that maybe that has played a bit of a part over the time um, with connectivity. Uh, what else? Um, it was just running really slow and one of the things that I hadn't realized is that maybe um, it's power consumption so I was able to regulate because I regulate the power to the um, the Eagle computer I was able to turn it up a little bit more and uh, and throw a bit more voltage into it and it worked great then so um, clearly that was that problem because uh, having the extra camera and electronics on the extra and an extra raster is clearly taking time away from uh, voltage away from everything else. So, uh, yeah, so we've 
come across that, we've eliminated that. Um, in terms of uh, data collection, um, when things were going, I'm still not capturing the amount of frames that I really want to, uh, that I should be getting out of the system. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I am a little bit disappointed to be honest. Um, the it, data going from um, being saved uh, directly to the hard drive is a lot faster and I can see that. Um, but for some reason, like it's that dither that just takes takes its time, takes a little while to do, and I'm waiting and syncing up with the others as well. So, um, yeah, it's I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit more. Um, I know I wasn't getting a lot of data with the twins at times, um, but this is a lot worse than that. So I need to work on that. Um, What's the other thing? I'm, I'm just tired and rambling, guys. Tired and rambling. Um, I've had a quick look at, at the data. Um, I don't know what's happened for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes um, towards the end. I'll have to look into that. Anyway, uh, I love challenges. Um, I still love looking at this setup. Put a grin on my face, but I'm just super tired and I need to get going. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's hope the next imaging session things go a lot better. Um, I'll work on some of the bugs and uh, work on some of the sequences as well um, and we'll go from there. And uh, yeah, so I was only able to capture RGB as well. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll have a look at the RGB image combined, see what that looks like. And uh, next session we will have to add a bit more data to it on the luminance and HA stuff um, but ideally I want to be doing that all that in one night anyway so uh, yeah this is a complete F up <laughs> for night oh well it happens happens to the best of us I'm not saying that I'm the best I'm far from that but you know what I mean I'm tired alright guys so Hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if so, give me a big thumbs up. Leave a comment. And uh, if this is the first video you've seen, please check out some of my others. And uh, maybe hit that subscribe. Alright. That's it for me. And the, uh, the pain in the arm. Twins? Triplets? I mean, triplets. Um, until next time, see you later.